Yeah, essentially, I mean, like we all know, most of the Hindu temples are either dedicated to Lord Shiva, mm -hmm. to Lord Vishnu, to Amman, uh, at least in, in the context of the Malaysian scene, and Murugan in, 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 in Ganesha. Like this one, this, this particular temple, the Sri Sundararaja, uh, Sundararaja Raja Temp, uh, Perumal Temple, basically is a temple which is dedicated to Lord Vishnu. In fact, Perumal, uh, in among, among the Tamils is known, I mean, Vishnu is known as uh, Perumal in among the Tamils, mm. or they also known as Tirumal, you know, kind of thing. And um, basically, this, this particular temple was actually, the, the dates that I read about are 1890, 1892. Huh? So it's considered like one of the oldest. I wouldn't, I'm not so sure whether, whether the oldest, because there's also a Lord Rama temple in Penang, which was done in the 1880s. You know, so this, I think, would be among the oldest Vishnu, Vaishnavite temple in the country. But if you think about the oldest temple, there's one Ganesha temple in Malacca. Mm -hmm. Then the second one, the second oldest, that is in the 1780s. Then there's one 1833, the Lord Mariman temple in Penang. See, he, he's got basically, you know, usually this is a Vishnu. Uh, and uh, normally he has a club on the left, in his, in his left hand. And he would have a conch on his, on his left hand, a conch. Then he'll also have a discus, you know, kind of thing, chakra on his right hand. Next to Vishnu, Vishnu I, I would, I mean, I'm not so sure, but could be his Mahalakshmi because in the temple itself, in the main, the main deity in the temple is Vishnu with Mahalakshmi, his consort. Huh? Of course, you've got Hanuman. Here you have a very, very common scene in temples about the gaj, the, 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 what is called the elephant and the crocodile kind of thing. Here was an elephant, very proud being and suddenly gets caught in muddy water uh, and is caught by a coconut and is not willing to and he still believes in his own strength all right yeah, and this scene, uh, is very very common to talk about ego that the, the elephant has this ego that he can actually get away from this crocodile and only until when he calls for the lord only then does he escape okay, and this is very common to be seen in most temples you will see this is around the wall and this is on the wall in the front itself but then there will be also sometimes in the entrance itself there will be layers you know the Raja Gobram has got five layers or seven layers or nine layers and some up to eleven but uh, and the more some say the more number of layers the more important the temple is and then in that in that some of them will have the, the main deities and then uh, the, the people then you know, musicians at different levels that show different kind of but in this is just at the entrance itself See, you must remember that, I mean, Klang is one of the places where, being a port, there were yeah. early settlers. Huh? So a lot of Indians who live around Klang, and uh, just like in KL, Klang and KL, that neighborhood, and that's the same time when actually the temple in the Batu Caves was established, the Mariman Temple in KL was established around the same period. But this is a Vaishnavite temple established by the, the Indian community that was there at that time. And it's very common, they always say that for an Indian to live in a place where there's no temple, it's not a life, like, you know, there's a very particular sense of that. And so all Indians would like to have that. In fact, for me also, personally, I mean, I, when I was working in Klang Hospital, I worked in Klang in 76 to 80 in Klang Hospital. You know, and right. I, think I used to go to the temple. Oh. Uh, and, and, and I think it's a very nice temple. Very, I mean, uh, and the, I mean, the moment you go in there, there's a certain feeling that you're like, there's a charged feeling, you know, kind of you get, get into that kind of mood. Mm. Where you, I mean, I used to go and visit. But over the years, I think in 2015, they have now renovated it in a big way. So it's no more the old uh, structure that was there. Uh, it's much more renovated, much bigger structure now. Again, this is a, a Vishnu temple. The image in the middle uh, is essentially uh, Vishnu. There are 10 incarnations of Vishnu. Normally, they will know him as Vishnu avatar. The middle, the middle in incarnation basically is uh, the fifth incarnate of Vishnu. And this is known as a Vaman avatar. He comes in actually uh, disguised as a, as a dwarf, as a priest, a Vishnu coming, a Lord coming down. Because, and the, what he's um, putting his leg over is a king called Bali. And Bali was a very good king, very generous, always very, uh, very, always donating. And this is a very, very I mean, we have, we, it's a very important scene in our way. Also, again, talking about ego. All right. And here is, he comes to, I mean, Bali and the Vishnu in the form of a dwarf priest coming to Bali asking for alms. 
Then mm-hmm. Bali asked the same, give us, ask me whatever you want, I can give it to you. And this dwarf, this woman, Avatar, of Vishnu, he says, all I want is three steps, where, where my three steps will go. He did not realize that this is Vishnu and he can make himself very huge. And Bali, Bali says, why ask for such a small piece of land? Why don't you ask me for millions of acres or all 10 kingdoms or whatever? He said, no, no, I just want three steps. Three, the land that can fit my three steps. So then, yeah, he, of course, and here on his left is his guru who's telling the king actually who advised his king uh, not to agree for this uh, request by this, has recognized that this is a very Vishnu coming in as an avatar. But still, the, the Bali says, if you say it is Vishnu coming in as a, is God coming in as avatar, I've always been a follower. What more do I want? Getting the opportunity of serving him. And he agrees. And here is a scene where he takes one step, covers the whole earth. The second step, he covers the, uh, the, the uh, above. And then the third step, nowhere to put. That's when uh, King Bali then now basically bows down and he says, you don't have any other place. And he just put it over my head. Basically, the, the Tirupati also is a Thirumal temple. Huh? And uh, of course, the Tirupati is the main temple that in, uh, some, I don't know if you want to use the word the richest temple or, you know, but definitely a temple which is very revered. Everybody would love to go and pay homage. Uh, and I think it's, it's, it's common for most Indians, I mean, most Hindus to want to go to Tirupati once in their lifetime at least. On the right hand side, of course, I mean, on my, on my left is Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna is the eighth incarnate of Vishnu. Among, let's say, there are, some would say there are 22, but generally there are 10, the 10 Vishnu avatars, there are 10 incarnates. And here is Lord Krishna, and he is always he's known as a cowherd, having a flute, playing with a flute, you know, kind of thing. So every day he would go out and take care of the cows. Uh, and of course, along the way, uh, he will meet uh, the girls in the village. Mm. Radha was his main friend that he had. And then he will also disturb the, what is called the gopis, the girls who are in the village carrying their pots. He'll be trying to throw stones to the, to the girls and disturb them, you know, that kind of thing. And there's one scene of Lord Krishna, uh, where the, the girls are bathing, you know, he kind of steals their clothes, sits up a tree, very naughty, playful uh, God. I mean, you know, some, some will say, if you want to take Krishna, some take him for his seriousness, some take him as a child, there's also a baby, you know, kind of thing. Then the, the next one is Lord Garuda. Uh, Lord Garuda is essentially is not an incarnate, but is a vehicle. See, most of our Hindu gods, they have a vehicle to travel on. Just like right. Ganesha has got a mouse, huh? Shiva right. has got a bull, huh? mm-hmm. Vishnu has a Garuda to travel on. So this is actually an image of the Lord Garuda itself. Huh? With the wings, so you'll see the wings. Huh? So basically, and, uh, and Vishnu, wherever you want to go, he sits in the Garuda and travels around. The next, the next one essentially is... Uh, if I look at the wheel, I mean that that's I mean the wheel, I think it will be Murugan. But on, the, on his left is Narad. Narad is like a celestial being, moves from one place to another, telling stories, and like a very same, very common, uh, common storyteller. You know, anybody wants to know, has got any questions, any problems, we'll go and talk to him, and he will go and tell the lords, okay, this is a problem that's happening among the demons, this is happening among the, the gods. So it's very common. I mean, it, it, most temples would have this outside. 